Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, you're welcome to this special broadcast. Um, I want to encourage you to share the um, invite and um, get as many freedom fighters on the line, please. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my broadcast today. Una welcome, una welcome. I will just take some time for the greet una one by one. As you share, if you just join, please share. Please, please, please. Emmanuel Anyi, thank you, thank you. It's been a long time. Rachel Tabot, thank you. Kingsley Muna, you are watching. That's great. Just share so that we can talk some some uh, some freedom business. Yes, yes, yes. Linjo Kingsley, longest time too. Fidel Sambi, you are always there. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Yes. Agendo Maurice, thank you. Patriotic salute. <laughs> yes, um, Princess Ranga, you're welcome, welcome. God bless you too. God bless you too. Anu Moket, my man. Baku Amidu, Jacinta Fon, Patriotic salute. Yes, can you just share for me? I want us to hit at least a reasonable number, 100, <coughs> so that we can take off from there. Can we do that? And in Bree, keep on sharing. Let's hit 100. <laughs> I did not abandon my people like that. <laughs> You're the one who gave me the new coat to wear. So, <coughs> and then... Um, Mr. George, faith, wisdom, joy, and hello. I give you your own 24 gun salute. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going up, we're going up. Madhu Amba, thank you for joining. You were invited, you joined, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cody, Cody, thank you. Skaku Boya. Patriotic salute. Share, share, and let us let us get there quick uh, sooner than later. Um, <clears throat> you are all welcome to this special broadcast, and um, I have a, a, a lot of things to say, especially at this very critical time. In our struggle, I hope 
you will help to share this message even after I am done. We need it now. We need it now. So keep on sharing and let's hit the hundred mark. The hundred, the hundred, the hundred. <coughs> you know, as a government, as a government, we endeavor to bring you the truth. We endeavor to bring you the truth. Because there are many facts out there. Facts. Facts. Facts are things somebody say, I, I know it, I've seen it, and he's the only one who says so. I verified it, and sometimes the facts are not, they don't tell you the truth. Some, there are some facts that are not, tr uh, they are not the truth. Because what the eye cannot see is not a fact, but yet it exists. So they are not, not all facts are truth, and not all, the truth is not necessarily a fact that can be checked. We endeavor to bring you the truth because the truth will always prevail. The truth will prevail. Some people will be killed because of the truth. Because nobody understood them and nobody agreed with them. When they said it, when it, it happened. But later on, everybody came to that realization that they were right. And so they became heroes. As a government, we are, we are led by faith, not by fear. If you have a government that is run by people who act because of fear, then you are in danger. You are in danger. We act by faith. We refuse to act by fear. Because let me tell you, me myself sitting here, anyone in this government and in this revolution, anything can happen to us. But the people that, are, that, are, that have decided we are going to Boya, they will not react by fear. They will act by faith. Because whatever, come what may, we are marching to Boya, period. As a government, we try to spread, not rumors, but information. The difference between rumors and information is the source. Is the source. The source makes the difference. We try to spread information. Information. Information comes from people with authority to 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 reveal certain things. The rumors generate from anywhere from the beer parlor from the room from the phone from an email from a whatsapp from a text message they can originate from anyone anytime anywhere but a government is not run like that we cannot we cannot function on rumors we try to function on information and my counsel to you people to all of us is to know that La Republic have finally discovered that our strength is the social media. They have discovered our strength. We have, we have prosecuted this case, our revolution, mostly on social media. That is the arm, that's the weapon that has conquered all their weapons. And so, the Republic has penetrated the social media because they want, to, they want to beat us in our own game. And unfortunately, many people don't know. Many people don't know that. The Republic has sufficiently infiltrated, paid people, spread them all over the social media, opening fake accounts, using fake uh, um, 
uh, Southern Cameroon names <clears throat> and, be, and send friendly requests all over the place. And they are now your friend. They are my friends on, on social media, on, on Facebook. Sometimes they talk, they talk like some, some of us. And, because, uh, and sometimes some of them betray themselves because they don't know enough of the Queen's language. So they make certain statements and they write, and their own keyboards also betray them. Because when, when they are using a, Fran a French keyboard and they are trying to tell a lie in English, the keyboard will betray them. And they will say some things and spell them out in French instead of the English uh, spelling. But some people are not still smart to see that there are many, many La Republic surrogates who have spread everywhere trying to beat us in our own game. And some of the things you call truth, some of the things you call fact, there are no facts. They are, in, in, they are generated by this machine, this propaganda machine, this social media army uh, that has been engaged by La Republic to infiltrate our ranks and cause whatever confusion they want to, co they want to cause for their benefit. This is the time that we need an, the IG more than ever before. For those who question why we should need an IG at this time of the revolution, they say we don't need one. This is the time. Because when there are, there are, there's a lot of noise, that's when you need a voice. You can distinguish and you can trust. When there's a lot of noise, that's when you need a voice. When there are a lot of actors, that's when you need the trust comes in. The issue of trust comes in. So you need an authority that can help you to tell you who to trust and who not to trust. Even the vetting of, let me digress, digress a little. Even the vetting of, of the defense groups, the self-defense groups that are rising up now. You know that the public is going, to, is going to get involved? It is going to get involved. It's not a prophecy. They will, they will try to do that so as to destabilize us from within. But if you don't have an authority that can vet, that can vet who says he is who, and you say, let everybody just be on his own, that's a recipe for confusion. That's why the DOD is there. If they don't do anything, it will help us to coordinate, to make sure that the sheep is separated from the wolves. That's the truth. It will help us to correctly channel the phones to the sheep and not to the wolves. It is for the safety and the survival of our revolution that we need a government now. Look at the kind of confusion that's going on. Everybody with a keyboard and a phone, he, can, he records his own and he throws it out there with an intention. They are paid to do that. And you just receive it. Now, when you receive a recording, right? When you receive a recording, a phone recording, and somebody is on the other side, one side of the phone, the other one is on the other side of the phone, and the other person says, I am this. And you just say, oh, he is that. Do you know that person? Do you know the one calling? Do you know the one who, who is purportedly receiving the call? Do you, have you verified who, is, who he is? If he is who he says he is? That is how we are manipulated. That's why you receive... I woke up this morning to a, a, a plethora of the, a, a audio recordings on WhatsApp and uh, very contradictory. One says they have been taken to Yaoundé, the other one says they are not taken to Yaoundé. And tell me who is a phone, phone conversation. Who is the phone? Who is on the other side? Have you verified, have you vetted, have you verified that person? I can be in one, one room and the person is on the other room and say, let's record this and let's throw it out there. 
because that's that's the truth today is whoever gets first to the media and says what they want to say that is the truth to many of us that's wrong if we if we don't have a voice we can listen to in this confusion emotions shall run wild we shall make a lot of mistakes that will be irreparable I'm not saying this because I don't care enough. I'm not saying this because I want to be, I want to excuse some, um, some, some lack of action. No, no, no. Silence should not be interpreted as idleness. Silence should not be interpreted as idleness, as some people may want. I am mad within me for what is happening. If I tell you that, I am I'm happy, no. I don't sleep. I don't sleep well. I feel everything you feel. But I want to tell you that without if we don't have level heads who are in charge of the boat at this time, we shall make mistakes that will be irreparable. I came today because I want reason to prevail, even in the midst of our emotional stress. I want reason to prevail. So I have a few things I would like to talk with us. That was just an intro. Our leaders, let me read you their names again, so I don't forget them. His Excellency, all these are all His Excellency, so when I forget it, I forget to put the title, don't mind. Sisiko Ayoktabe, Professor Chet Awasom, Dr. Mfo Ngalafo, Barista Nalova B. Dr. Fidelis Che, <clears throat> Dr. Henry Kime, Mr. Tassan Wilfred, Dr. Ojong Okongo, Barrister Bless Shufai, Barrister Eyambe Elias, Dr. Colonius Kwanga. Now, listen to me. Have you just heard those names? Is there any one of them that sounds like a terrorist? Is there anyone that sounds, any name they are called that sounds like a common criminal? They were arrested in Abuja on the, on the 5th of, of January 2018. When all of them have one thing in common, we are from Ambazonia. British Southern Cameroons. So here's the thing. We are all, we, all of them have one thing in common. They are either refugees, asylees, refugees and asylees, I put them in one box, or they are people seeking that status. So we have one thing in common. All of us, all Ambazonians, you are either a refugee right now by status or you are one qualified for or seeking that status and they are arrested now when you are arrested by any secret service as they were arrested the issue is the issue is primarily an administrative issue Be until it goes to court it remains an admin issue when the immigration or any security uh, organ of the state arrests you, it is primarily a security issue. When the law enforcement arrests you, as it were, it was a security issue. When it gets to court, it becomes a judicial matter. <coughs> so, our leaders have been confirmed 
severally to be all in Nigeria. These people, I call all of them, all of them, every single one of them, they are in Abuja. And we got another confirmation that the 39 that were arrested in Taraba State, they flew from Jalingo to Abuja today under the supervision of the United Nations uh, High Commission for Refugees. In fact, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees sent a lawyer, their lawyer, to Jalingo to supervise, to ensure that the operation was hit free and that they were brought to Abuja. It is still an administrative detention. And when, I will say so many things, I don't think I will say them all in order, but let me say this. When it is an administrative detention, a lot of things are possible that can happen which may not happen if it becomes a judicial detention or a judicial matter. The court does not come in to understand us, to understand the matter. They come to interpret the law and declare guilty or not guilty. <clears throat> then I want to tell you that Nigeria is more interested in this matter than just a verdict of guilty or not guilty. Because Cameroon, La Republique, and France have fed Nigeria with more, too much intoxicating lies about us, about the issues. There's a lot of lies that have been peddled to the Nigerian government. A lot of accusations, a lot of things that have been sent, have been sold to the Nigerian government. And they don't really, all they know up to this time is much of what the French and the La Republique have made them to know about us. Our government has not been officially presented to the government of Nigeria. We have not had a state, we have not had a presentation of our government to the government of Nigeria. We just were just recently appointed. We don't even yet have an ambassador for Nigeria. So our government was supposed to have been, by now, presented to the government of Nigeria where we will really sit down with their experts at the, at the Ministry of for Foreign Affairs or the Presidency to explain to them where we are coming from and where we, who we are. We have not done so yet. So the Nigerian government does not, cannot pretend to say they know everything about us. Everything they know about us up to this time is what they have been told or what the, the story the storyline of La Republique and the French concerning us, or probably from the media, from the anti ambazonian media. So, <clears throat> if Nigeria has arrested us, I'm playing the devil's advocate, advocate now. If Nigeria has arrested our people, this is, and has, and has, has made it up to this time, an administrative detention. This is the opportunity they have to understand the issues to their roots. This is the opportunity they have, and I'm sure before they come, when they come back, you will hear more from the horse's mouth. This is an opportunity for the first time to hear the leader of Amazonia talk to him, talk to the government or very important figures in the government about who we are, what we want, so that not, we are not who they have defined us to be, but this is who we are and this is our story. For the first time, even members of, the con of Congress or members of the Parliament and Senate in Nigeria are knowing our story. What about the services of the presidency? So if Nigeria wants to go down to the root of the issues, which is, which is understanding, understanding the issues from their roots, to understand exactly who we are. We are not terrorists. But go to the French media. We have been painted to be such. If Nigeria wants to understand the issues right from their root, they only have to get it now from the horse's mouth. Unfortunately, in a method that is not very pleasant.
That is not exactly what we want. And you know, when a government comes out to make official announcements, um, uh, confirming, making official statements, they are open to international scrutiny from that moment. But if they want to have an in-house trying to understand an issue from the root, they will keep it administrative. And they can give us truths that we know, which we may not, you may not be able to verify, but you know that that's the truth. For example, if a foreign minister calls you, tells you that, let me tell you the truth about something, but don't quote me. Don't let it be off camera. And it tells you, you know what? We have your people. Will you say because he did not make that statement officially, he is lying? Let, 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 will, will you say, no, okay, okay. Okay, if you don't put it in writing, you are a liar. Will you say that? If you go right to a camp, a, a, you are working with the government, and then you go to write the, of maybe the office of the number two in the nation, and he says, I want to tell you something in confidence, and he tells you that thing. You, will you say that, okay, since it's, not, it's off camera and you did not write it on a piece of paper, you are lying to me? That would be strange. I've heard recordings today. They are this one. This, they, some people, they even brought a plane, a plane put there together. They say, that plane has green, red, yellow. That plane is in, uh, in um, um, is it Jalingo or it is in Abuja or what? Do, have you even been to Abuja? Do you know how the Abuja airport looks like? Can you see a plane standing on an, an Abuja airport and you know that that plane is standing on Abuja airport? Can you? Can you verify that? Do you know Jalingo airport? Can you tell me a plane that is... Can you look at the picture and say, oh, that is Jalingo airport? Now the enemy knows that you don't know. So they put anything there and the picture... Some people are sharing the picture seriously. But for your information, they are in Abuja. They left, the 39 left Jalingo, and in Abuja, as I speak, they are in Abuja under the supervision of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees and the government of Nigeria. So we have to be very careful. We have to know that we are not, we don't have a monopoly of this media anymore. They are challenging us right there in our game. If you are not careful, they will, they will beat your house down. As they are beating some. Some people can't sleep. Oh, I heard this one on, on social. I saw it on Facebook. Oh, my God. I saw it on Facebook. Oh, my God. I can't sleep. You, who, see, there is authoritative information. You heard it from who? Who is that person who recorded it? What did he show you? How do you, you have you verified the, the actors of that of the, the the parties in that communication? Who are they to talk to tell you something and you don't sleep? <clears throat> so let me tell you whether good or bad. I don't want to question the method. We are coming out of this thing stronger than we went in, because right now. The Nigerian government understands the problem of Amazonia more than they did before the 5th of January. And by the time this thing is over, they will understand us better, not just the government, but the people of Nigeria, if we do what we have to be doing, instead of listening to WhatsApp audios and you say, I cannot sleep, oh, I cannot sleep, oh, I cannot sleep. If we do what we have to do, if we do what we have to do, our number one ally, Nigeria, will understand us better than they did before the 5th of January. That's my assurance for you. I, I'm, I'm already thinking of the day Mr. President will come out and we, we start making a store around and he will tell you some things. Then you will remember this video.
Mr. Our Secretary of State for Communication went right to the lion's den to get information and not rumors. To get information from authoritative sources. The, he went there and called and worked with the law attorneys who are not playboys. They are not boys in Nigeria. These are the people, the leading attorneys in Nigeria, for crying out loud. Whose presence alone in the matter changes the atmosphere? These are the people. And they went to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Now listen to me. Why United Nations High Commission for Refugees? Every Ambazonian, every British Southern Cameroonian in a diplomatic balance is a stateless person. We have our state, yes. But right now, if you are, you are we are asylees or asylee seekers or refugees or refugee seekers, so we are stateless people. Our only government in any country is the UNHCR, is the United Nations. And United, UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees. He is the president in any country of the stateless people. He is there to protect them. He is there to, f to fight for them. If they are hungry, he is the one to cry aloud the world so that they can get food to eat. He works with governments and organizations to make sure that the refugees and all the, uh, all the asylees and those in need of that status, they are attended to by the governments. That is their job. That is the job of the UNSCR. When you are as an asylee, you find yourself in any country, your own, your own embassy is the UNSCR. Your government in that country is, is, the, the, is the UNSCR. The person you call for help anytime is the UNHCR. And probably in collaboration with the host government. That's what it is. So when people are in an administrative detention, and you hear that the UNHCR is already in the middle of the matter, it means it is government to government going on now. And if the, ho the host government has refused to open it to the public is because they want to solve this thing administratively. If they don't want to solve it administratively, they will open it for the lawyers and open it to the press and make official statements and send it to court. When the courts come in, they are not coming to understand us. They are coming to interpret the law and decide who is guilty and who is not guilty. That does not bring the kind of understanding that we need, that probably the government of that home country needs to have with the UNHCR concerning our status and our activities. If the UNHCR has already, the government already made every, every effort, they have not the, to make every arrangement to make sure that the UNHCR is seeing them regularly. It's not one time. The UNHCR seeing them regularly. Why? And for that reason, they have even their position has changed, has been improved. They are living in a security guest house where they even have a, do a medical doctor who attends to them. So, okay, it as far as if they remain under this administrative detention, they they they. People can plead for them. People can plead our case to the government to explain exactly. You, you, um, um, Amnesty International has already pleaded for, the, for our case to the government. But you know, if the matter goes to court, you don't plead to court, into the, uh, in the court. Nobody intervenes when matters get to the court. But if it is, if it is still an administrative detention, you can plead. You know, uh, uh, Amnesty International can plead, friendly governments can plead, 
uh, other church organization can plead, and some who know our problem can come and explain to the government who we are and who we are not. That when things go to the court, every decision will depend on the judgment of the court, right or wrong. So under this atmosphere, there is a clear possibility of mutual understanding. We are, not, we are coming out differently. The, not only the government, but the Nigerian people will understand us now more than ever before. And you know, it is only under that, that, that scene now, as long as they remain in, the, in the administrative detention, the UNHCR can help every one of them. Do you know that if, the U, if, if you are arrested by any security agency, and they threaten to repatriate you. Even if it is one minute before the plane takes off in detention, if you plead, if you request for asylum or refugee, do you know that they will stay your repatriation? According to the international conventions, they must stay, they must stay your repatriation. That means they will stop it. Because according to international convention, once the man pleads, for that I am afraid for, for my life, I will be killed if I go back, I cannot go, immediately they will stop that repatriation process until a competent court will hear that matter and say, okay, it can be repatriated or extradited. That is what it is. When the UNHCR is in there now, let me give a little more of the secrets. When the UNHCR is at the middle of this matter, some of us, some of the people, are, don't re, don't yet have refugee status because probably they 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 did not see the need. They were residents, but today they are reminded that they have a nation, so they can repatriate them. But if the UNSCR comes in there and they are already talking with the UNSCR, the UNSCR is there knowing that everyone from Ambazonia is, 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 is uh, and now with the government of uh, the Republic seeking for them, trying to get them, arrest them. The threat is real. Has a credible threat against his life if he returns home. Therefore, even if they needed to make their state, to regularize their status with the UNSCR, that will be done within this interval. The UNSCR is not there to just come and um, tend to their wounds or come and comfort them and go. They are there for work. They come and communicate with them for work. For those of them who did not see the need to have a regular status as refugees, this is the time the United the UNSCR will say, fill this form or put this application and submit it here so that you are also covered because you, there's a credible threat against your life so that they all completely get the status they, they were supposed to have all together as refugees, as people who cannot go back to their country. All this can only happen during the administrate, an administrative detention. If he goes to court, they will only interpret the law according to the, the, the judge and make a pronouncement, and that's it. So the Nigerian government is already collaborating with the UNHCR. Is it for or against our people? It is for the people's, for, for our advantage. The people in Jalingo, I don't think all of them had refugee status. If at all, any one of the 39 had a refugee status. But the UNHCR has been able to intervene. The, their lawyer has been able to secure their, 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 their coming to Abuja. For what? Why, are, why is the UNHCR in the middle of it? United Nations uh, High Commission for Refugees. Why are they involved? We have to distinguish between rumors and information. speculation and the truth you can put one to one plus one to plus one and see something missing and you make a speculation that's why i put my my message yesterday in a few words i said we do not want to rely on distant recordings and so secretary chris had to go there face to face and secretary chris spoke not with Protection officers. Protection officers are field workers. They don't know the policy matters that connect government to government. They don't know. 
When you take your phone and all you can talk to is a protection officer, what, what do you know? What, what does he know? I've worked in that circle before, so I know what I'm talking about. What the commissioner talks with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the government and the presidency, the protection officers don't know that. They go on little assignments they give them to do. They are field workers. You take your phone, you talk to a field worker, and the person says, okay, okay, I know. I will see, I will, I will see what to do with that. And you, say, you think that United Nations has spoken. Which United Nations has spoken? You don't know how the system works. When Secretary Chris went there, he did not go to protection officers. He went to see the commissioner, who is the ambassador for all the refugees and all the asylees in Nigeria, and spoke with him face to face. So, his assurance, I am seeing this, we are seeing these people regularly, and they are fine. They are, their welfare is well taken care of. They have a medical doctor at their, at, at, their, at their disposal to make sure they are fine. Don't worry, we are, I'm, I'm, we, are, we are meeting with the foreign minister by this time, but he has left the country, we are meeting him. <laughs> so because you are emotionally fired up, everybody is a liar, so the, the, this, this, this uh, 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 foreign uh, this, the, 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 the high commissioner, just suddenly became a liar. Even in, if he would lie, he would lie to that man, lie to the lawyer, lied. Ah, ah. What about the foreign minister of Nigeria? The foreign minister of Nigeria. You know what he said? He said that. He said. Very early into this crisis, he was interviewed. He said, I don't know whether to call it an arrest or just, just in some interrogation. What does that mean? I know it doesn't make a lot of sense. What does it mean? I don't know. I don't know whether to call it a, an arrest or just call it for just interrogation. That's first of all, that statement from an of a government official under whose department this matter is to be settled has acknowledged we are keeping them. He said that I cannot characterize it as I don't know whether to characterize it as an arrest or for questioning, just call in for questioning. I know that they have some safe face, uh, um, some some uh, uh, cover-up to do, but in, as a diplomat, that statement is an acknowledgement that we are keeping them, but it is not what you think. So, if, they, if, if the foreign, if the, if the security agencies have you, and they are still, they put you in a situation where the, the government, the, the administration is in contact with you, and yet your matter is not referred to the court. <clears throat> it means it's an administrative, an administrative affair. And, and at that point, it will be resolved administratively. But when the courts come in, dialogue has ended. Any form of pressure has come to an end. There is no understanding, no no extra uh, 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 official understanding again possible the only thing now is what the lawyer how what the lawyers and the judges will interpret in court we are not there i prefer if you ask me if you ask me i will tell you that i would prefer an administrative settlement than a judicial one because when the matters go to court, this is what happens. The courts don't get to the truth of matters. No. The court is not there to look for the truth. The burden of the court is to prove that the prosecution is to prove that you are guilty. And the defense is to prove that according to the law, the evidence is not enough to convict you. 
and to cast doubt on any any uh, 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 any um, charges. So that so that the, the, when you cast that doubt, so that you will not be convicted because of insufficient evidence. The court is not there to go down to the bottom of the truth. It is only through administrative um, um, uh, uh, administrative uh, meetings or administrative processes where truth can come out, which may never come out through the court system. And if Nigeria is trying to go through the truth to know some truth, because see, there are, if you think that Nigeria's only concern is that they have arrested her for, Nigeria has about 2.5 million Nigerians in Amazonia. Nigeria has the, the, the longest border with Amazonia. Nigeria has a lot of cross, uh, cross national tribes and families. This is more than just a neighbor. If they have to understand this matter very well, it will only work in our favor. It will not work against us. If they have to understand what is going on, what, who is, it will work in our favor, not against us. If at the end of this, Nigeria is an ally indeed, and not an enemy, we would have won a, a serious victory. If at the end of all this, Nigeria is on our side, and they can, they can, they can, uh, they can, they can give a blind eye to certain things because they understand who we are or what what is going on, it would be better better for us. Because. Those of you who are saying, let the lawyers go there, let the lawyers go now to court, they are supposed to be in court, why are they wasting time? I, have, I understand their emotions. But it is the UNHCR that advised the lawyers, as learned, as intelligent as he is, stop court actions for now. So do you mean that the, the UNHCR was lying to that lawyer also? He said, let me just lie to this uh, great lawyer, lie to you. I will deceive him. They, they also deceived him. He said, stop court actions for now. In their wisdom, they were going through a, a better process that will cause the liberation of our people, which is the ultimate thing we need, and also come out with better understanding of who we are and what we are doing. Allow the lawyers to go and see them where they are. Allow the families to go and see them where they are. These two things. When these two people are allowed to go and see people who are in detention, the next thing is the court will be drawn in. And others, other powers, other, the court will be drawn in. There's no other thing the lawyer comes to a matter to do. He wants to get his evidence and get the interview, listen to the people and start knowing exactly how to start the legal fight. So, here's my submission to you. Secretary Chris, I spoke with him before I came up here. And he told me that on Monday, because we have a cabinet meeting, that we have to iron out some other details that I'm, I have not brought out to you. We have to iron out those details so that we come out, we, he will come out with a comprehensive statement to you on Monday. I just came to talk to you in this manner so that you are not out of, uh, uh, you, 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 don't, you, don't, you are not destabilized. And look at it. To look at what is going to ground zero, going on in ground zero. That's good news. The, the fight has not relented an inch. Kudos to the people who are paying the ultimate price, who are laying their funds and their finances for this struggle, who have kept Ground Zero alive. That's what we should be doing. And all this La Republic, all this their propaganda, trying to spread false news over um, uh, uh, WhatsApp and so on, to take fake videos, uh, fake, vid fake, fake photographs and so on, spread them around. This is their game. Right now, they are setting up militias with some of those francophones who can speak some English, putting them together 
And very soon they want to do this. They want to go and hit, kill some Nigerians. They want to kill some Nigerians. And they would, they would dress up their killers as Amazonians. They only need to send this kind of stupid videos and you start commenting how we shall deal with them. We shall deal with them. Go and kill this one. And they themselves will be the ones commenting and we will be agreeing and endorsing and publishing and forwarding and sharing on social media. Then when they go and now carry that act, when they, when they, when they carry on that act and they, 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 they slap it on us, there is no way we can even argue it and somebody will say we did not do it. Because, because they, 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 this is what the, the, the secret services and, and, and those um, uh, evil mafias do. They first of all use the media to prepare the people for the next action that they want to take. They do all this manipulation. People are fired up. People are angry. People are mad. And they start saying, we will do this, we will do this. Then they are evil, evil uh, gangs. Now go underground and go and do these things. And they say, hey, they have started doing it. Nigerians, look at it. These people hate you. This information you are receiving, I have given to you by Larry Public propagandists who have disguised in our midst and calling themselves English names. They are in your groups. You think they are because you saw their names to be Ayom, uh, Ashu. Uh, 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 you saw them. You, some of maybe are answering our heroes' names. They will answer Tasa, answer Agbo. You say, okay, this is, this, is a, this is one of us. You admit them in your forums. They are not. They are wolves in sheep clothing. And they will use them like this to spread out some information so that you, so that when when they when they are fired up our base and misdirected their emotions and then they are making statements that are out of place then they will now send their action their action team to go and carry some hit actions and then and they put it on them and there are some there are some of us in our ignorance who will go on face, facebook if not the part of their team we still go on Facebook to claim the actions, to claim that, yes, we did it. Yes, we did it. Let them know that we are, we, Ambazonia, we are angry. You know what that does to the struggle? Do you know what that does to the struggle? At a time that we're supposed to be watching over the Nigerians as they are watching over our desperate people who have crossed the borders. And more and more are coming into Nigeria. They, have, they would have just changed the equation. We have to be vigilant. We have to keep our emotions under check. We have to rely on information and not rumors. We have to rely on the government that we have put in place. We are not dumb. Silence is not inaction. Sometimes silence is just that. I don't know if telling you the truth now will help you or destroy you. Silence at times is that telling you the truth now may endanger a greater good. So I may decide to keep it. And I tell you, be calm. That's what it takes to be a leader. So I want to congratulate you for listening to me. And uh, I came to talk to you as common sense, live show, not as, a, as, uh, as the Undersecretary for Foreign Affairs. So I, I had to just, you get official information from Secretary Chris on Monday, but this is good enough to keep your, keep your emotions under check and know that some people are working and seriously so. To make sure that we come out of this better than we went in. God bless you and God bless the nation of the Federal Republic of Amazonia. Bye-bye.